What's going on, my friend? It's Jeff Newport from ChasingStrength.com. And in today's video, we are going to answer the question, what's the optimal kettlebell workout duration for the best results, right? And we're gonna, we gotta use the old air quotes, best results. So let's dive into it. Well, you know, back in the day when I was in my late teens and early 20s, probably, I'd say it's probably like 2021, 20, my workouts were long, like really long, like two, two and a half hours. Now I'd say, I'd say it's probably like 18 to 20, 21, right? <laughs> if I'm being honest with us, with myself and with you, uh, yeah, two, two and a half hours, sometimes as long as three hours. After all, more is better, right? So, And then somehow on the backside of college, I got a hold of a newsletter called Serious Growth put out by a guy named Leo Costa. And uh, Leo was a bodybuilder slash entrepreneur who had teamed up with the Golden Eagle Tom Platts. I'll flash a picture of him up here on the screen. He's he's the guy squatting. And, and Tom was known for his freakishly muscular legs, right? And his super intense training methods. In fact, he trained more intensely, it was argued, than any other bodybuilder. And yet, unfortunately for him, you know, much to his chagrin, he never actually won an Olympia. So supposedly the background of the story goes like this. Leo had gotten himself invited to Bulgaria to see how the world champion Bulgarian Olympic weightlifting team trained at the time. Okay. So just a quick backstory. Bulgaria is a tiny little country. It was in the Eastern Bloc behind the Iron Curtain. It was a satellite of the Soviet Union. And these guys rivaled and then beat the mighty Soviet weightlifting team. They beat them uh, multiple times in the 70s and 80s. I think it was more 80s than 70s. And they just a tiny little country and they didn't have a huge population to draw from. And so everybody thought there must be something different about the way they trained and indeed there was. So apparently, according to Leo, according to the Bulgarians, your testosterone levels drop significantly after 45 minutes of training. And according to Leo, this is why the Bulgarians chopped up their training sessions into multiple 30-minute sessions throughout the day. So it was not uncommon for the Bulgarians to train six to even eight times a day, right, in short 30-minute sessions, usually separated by 30 minutes or an hour. And around lunchtime, it was you know, around two hours or so. And so they would they would train from first thing in the morning, all right, to lunch and they'd have a break at lunch and then they pick up back to lunch and then they would train into the evenings and you know sometimes after dinner of course 45 minutes then became the standard and we saw this parroted uh through the bodybuilding magazines of the time ultimately but you know what i use these concept 45 minutes or shorter workouts and honestly one of the most productive training periods in my life was when i chopped my training back from that two two and a half hour period to 40 minutes per training session or less. And so was, I, I guess it was probably right around 40. And then what I did is I would tack on like a 10 to 30 minute recovery period post-workout. Okay. So I'd work out for 40 minutes and then I would do active recovery techniques for between 10 and up to 30 minutes. Of course, I experimented with this over the years with my private clients because you know, typically when we did personal training sessions, it was an hour long, right? We either did an hour or 30 minutes and most of them were an hour. Okay. So one of the best templates that I came up with to use within that hour was the following. It looked like this. Number one or A, if you will, was a warm up, and that was 10 to 20 minutes. Okay. B was your actual workout or training period. And that was 30 minutes. And then C was your cool down. And that was five to 10 minutes. Now, the warm up was usually more of a, a transition time from work mode because my clients, almost all my clients were, uh, you know, full time employees, right? Or businessmen or businesswomen. So it was more of a transition time from work mode into workout mode so they could get their mindset right. So oftentimes it was uh, stretching and so active stretching, that sort of thing, and activation work and core stability work, that sort of thing. So it was, it was pretty much like a decompression period. So as a result, a lot of my early online programs became 40 to 45 minutes long, and some of them still still are. But honestly, most are 20 to 30 minutes long. In other words, the meat and potatoes of the workout program is 20 to 30 minutes. Now, it's up to you, unless I specify 20 minutes, whether you do 20 or 30 minutes, right? And honestly, there are some that are even shorter. I have some that actually have a five-minute warm-up in a 15 minute workout. Okay. Now, why is that? It's quite simple because experience has dictated 
to me that this time range, like the 20 to 30 minutes is usually enough, right? It's enough. It's, you can get a large amount of work done, feel like you got in a good workout, feel like you accomplished something and you can do it without trashing yourself. Or if you really want to, you can bring yourself up to the border of about to trash yourself, okay, without actually trashing yourself. You know, if more is good, right, or some is good, more is always better, right? So one of the problems that I experience with my my clients and a lot of my customers is that these guys and some ladies, too, they start feeling so good that they want to do more, which, you know, that's a good thing to have increased energy levels throughout the day. But they forget that they're supposed to feel good, right? And you're supposed to have energy to spare instead of feeling like you were run down or run over like we used to after traditional beatdown style workouts, right? I mean, those two, two and a half hour, you know, power building and power lifting and bodybuilding sessions that I used to do, I'd go over to the dining hall and if it wasn't nailed down, it was in my stomach 30 minutes later, right? And then I would sleep for eight and a half, nine hours. There aren't too many of us who can live that way right? Especially when we're over a certain age. So here's a perfect example, right? I got an email from one of my customers the other day. His name's Jeff as well. Uh, He's feeling great. He's he's four months into a program that I have called Kettlebell Wad, which is a daily ultra short workout uh, program. It's 15 minute workouts daily plus a five minute warm up. Um, And the whole purpose of it is to build your consistency muscle, right? So you achieve results by building momentum, And that momentum breeds motivation, right? And it becomes a a feedback loop, okay? So what was funny is he found his copy of another program that he bought years ago called Kettlebell Burn. And he asked me if he he could stop doing the wad because, you know, he wanted to do burn because, you know, burn sounds sexier than wad, I guess. I don't know. Uh, And then pick up wad where he left off. And so this is what I said in, in my email response. I put, I wouldn't, I would just keep going with wad. Why? Simple. 15-minute workouts are easy to do, and they fit into any schedule. 45-minute workouts, well, they're easy to rationalize your way out of and skip and kick down, kick on down the week. So again, my, my answer falls into the category of the old quip. This is working so well. Help me screw it up. <laughs> right? And that, that quip often tag teams with its cousin. It works so well, I stopped doing it. Right. So at the end of the day, the optimal workout duration, the optimal workout length for you is all seven of these things. Number one, it's the workout that easily fits into your schedule. Right. You don't have to cram it in there or crush it in or move things around. Number two, you won't rationalize and not doing it. Number three, you won't feel foolish not doing it. Number four, it leaves you with more energy than you had. In other words, it gives to you instead of takes from you. Number five, it's repeatable. Okay. Like, for example, I once squatted, I think uh, I was on the backside of college and I I attempted to squat 315 for 10 by 10, the German volume training. Okay. I got seven sets of 10 with 315. I had two minutes of rest between it. Then I did 275 for a set of 10. And then I did 225 for two sets of 10. That was a great workout. My legs were pumped. They felt awesome. I felt like a million bucks. But I have never repeated that workout, all right? So it was non-repeatable. Number six is similar to number four, and this is it creates a reservoir of energy inside of you so you actually want to do more, all right? And number seven, and most importantly, it actually produces results, okay? So if you've been struggling with the best like workout duration, how long should my kettlebell workouts be in order to see the best results, hopefully you found this helpful, okay? Uh, And if you're wondering about the workouts that I mentioned in here, Kettlebell Wad and Kettlebell Burn 2.0, I will leave a link for each of them in the description. And if you want to learn more about some of my other workouts, I'll leave a link to the, the store in the description as well. All right. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, click the like button, uh, click the share button. If you know somebody else that will find this helpful, right, who's, who's stuck in the past like so many of us are or were. All right. And uh, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button. Okay. Hopefully you found this helpful. Again, I enjoyed making it for you. And until next time, my friend, stay strong.